Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to use the plugin Enscape for Revit. Uh, Enscape is a plugin that's uh, very useful for rendering. Uh, it's been used, so it can be used in Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, and ARCHICAD. Um, it's a real-time renderer, so as you make changes in your Revit file, you will see those changes happen in real time uh, in your render view. So it's very useful, um, easy workflow. Uh, Enscape recommends having a dual screen, so you can do a split screen between your rendered model and your workflow in, in Revit or Rhino. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get started and do a basic rendering in Revit using Enscape. So once you load Enscape, you'll see a tab at the top. Uh, here, this gives you all of your options. Uh, just by clicking Start, it'll take us to uh, basically the 3D view from Revit. It'll, it'll create that in Enscape. So this will give you kind of an understanding of the space. Uh, this is the model that I've been working on. So in terms of, and again, I would normally split screen this on another monitor, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you around um, using this. So to get used to the keyboard shortcuts, um, it's similar to a gaming keyboard, W um, for forward, S to move back, A left, D right, Q, um, Q is down, E is up. And holding down the left mouse button will look around, holding down the right mouse button will orbit, and then holding shift with the right mouse button will change the time of day. So this can be useful if you're doing a sun study, if you're designing something in relation to the sun path or shadows, uh, this can be really helpful. So you can see that change in real time. Enscape um, uses your graphics card. So the stronger graphics card you have, the better and faster these renderings will generate. So there's fly mode and, and walk mode. Uh, holding, hitting space will transfer from one to the other. Uh, walk mode basically brings you down to eye level and locks you there so you can't uh, jump around everywhere. Enscape has a very good uh, interior render engine as well, so just looking around this interior, it does a pretty good job of simulating the light qualities that you would expect in, in the real world. Um, there's other shortcuts that I, I won't explore, but um, this is just get to get kind of a basic overview of, of Enscape. So when I work, I'm going to split screen this. So I'm going to hold this down. Enscape has its own set of toolbars. So as I work, I like to work in plan. And I can see those changes happen to the floor plan as I work. So for example, if I would like to move this person, I can move her over on the couch. And I'll see this update in real time uh, in my rendering. So any changes I need to make, I can move, move that cup, and you'll see it happen here on the table. So any updates to this backyard or the scene, I can make and change in real time. So again, Enscape is a plugin, so I can keep everything open. I don't have to export the file to another software. This is all just happening live. And once, so, to kind of the, the last step that we're going to do is hit render. So we'll render the image. So that's here under tools. Um, we can also create a series of views. So let's say this is the view we want. We've, we've modified it. This is the view. Uh, we can go ahead under tools and say create view. And I can say living room three or four. Um, and now when I move, I, let's say I toggle somewhere else, I can set that to the view that I had just set. So 
That's under Tools, Create View. Now, we also have an entire asset library at our fingertips. This can let us drop in the entourage that we need to make our scene appealing, um, giving it scale. So adding people, furniture, plants, trees, uh, this is where you would do that. So there's an entire set of lighting. This gives us a lot of options. There's websites where you can download uh, you know, Revit families and, and bring them right into the into the scene. I, re I like to use the Enscape library for rendered uh, people. They, they have very realistic people as well. So those are easy to add. Um, simply, let's see, we'll drop in some furniture. So once you choose something you like, It's as simple as dropping it in. So I, I like to work in plan mode. So here I am in plan, um, adding this seat here, and then hitting escape. And you'll see it's thinking, and then it shows up in your scene. So that seat just appeared. Of course, we can manipulate it and rev it. I want to move it somewhere else. you'll see that it, it changes in relation to my file. So you're seeing it render, and you're seeing those updates. So that's, again, under Tools, Asset Library. You can bring in Enscape Assets. So there, Enscape also has video and panorama and VR capabilities. We're not going to get into that for this tutorial. Um, this is really just to get started with rendering. So under settings, go to visual settings. This is where we can really set the scene in terms of lighting, camera, uh, really the environment, setting the atmosphere. So here under rendering, if we want to communicate to a client that this is a progress rendering and this isn't a final image, uh, oftentimes, increasing the outlines can, can help communicate that. Um, we can change the settings if you want to just look at a massing model or you want to just understand what the form and space of a project look like without looking at materials. You can set it to white mode. Um, polystyrol is another option. And then light view will simulate the how much light is, is entering a room or how what the what the lighting quality is, uh, kind of a, a very basic view of how much radiation is, is hitting a space. So we can also change exposure, the depth of field. I'm going to go back to my regular scene. I'm going to turn off my outlines. Um, we can turn on depth of field. So if you want to blur the background of a specific image, um, you can set the location of the focal point. So if we want this person to be in focus. We can change that, um, decreasing the depth of field a little bit, put more in focus. So those are some of the effects. Right now, two-point perspective is on, which basically creates every, every vertical in the scene, and then everything else is uh, will recede to a vanishing point. Then under image, this will let us affect uh, highlights, shadows. Um, right now it sets an auto contrast, so I can play with that if I want a darker, brighter scene. I can change the saturation. Typically foliage for me comes in a little too bright, so I like to turn down the saturation there. I can affect ambient brightness. I can add a motion blur. Um, bloom is how much the spotlights will glow in an image. Vignette is how dark the uh, perimeter of the render is. Under atmosphere, we have the ability to change the fog intensity, height, um, sun brightness, moon size, if this is a, a night render. And then the horizon itself, we can set that to different types of 
uh, sky. So you can set it um, with different backgrounds, mountains, urban, um, all of those can be changed. And then the last tab here is capture. So we can change the, the size of the image that we produce. We can set the aspect ratio um, and you can set a file format to export to. All right, so once those settings are where you want them to be, once we're happy with our view, we can go ahead and under tools, hit render image. Now it gives us two options. We could either render the image to our desktop or we could render it into our Revit file. So if you're putting together a set of construction documents and you wanna include that rendering in one of your sheets, this is the way you would do it. Otherwise, hitting render image will save it to your desktop, uh, in which case you can drop that image into your Revit file later if you like. So I'm gonna hit render image, save this to the desktop. And you'll get a preview of the rendering here. So it'll give you a status bar and show you the progress as you work. So again, it's using your graphics card. So the, the more powerful your graphics card, the, the faster this will go, the more fluid your workflow will be. So here's some examples showing some scenes that have been previously rendered. This is using the, the white mode We can also, in Revit, if we set our uh, scene to be uh, to use a clipping box, we can also see that clip in Enscape, which is nice. That's another feature. So to show you, show you that, I'll just go to the 3D view. And then if I turn on my section box, as I start Clipping this in Revit, you'll also start seeing it update in Enscape as well. I may have to close it and open it again to see these updates. So I'm going to close that, open this up, and then hit Start. and you'll see that it is clipping away at my scene. So if you remember, I turned on depth of field, so it's still blurry, but this gives you a more diagrammatic view of the project if you wanna show a cutaway of a portion of your model. Under visual settings, I would set my field of view down to be more horizontal here. Hard to see, but that's giving us this, and then I can turn off depth of field to show that. I'm also seeing some fog here, but as a diagram or as a as an image, this can be effective. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.